Yeah, what's going on everybody? It's your boy iPod King Carter here. I want to welcome you guys to a new video. Today, we're here to talk about NBA 2K23. Now, I know what y'all already thinking. It's over for 2K. They can't come back. Y'all tired of the devs. Y'all tired of the direction. But I got 10 things that NBA 2K23 can do to bring the community back. And not only that, make the community happy. The number one top priority that should be on 2K's list right now is crossplay. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Well, what about last gen versus next gen? What about that problem? I'm literally letting you guys know now that that problem won't weed itself out until the years to come. We already have been through last gen versus next gen when PS3 and PS4 came out. It was like, oh, Oh, snap 2k is just gonna keep making a game for a last gen console for a few years until everybody can afford another one or until they make more that's the same problem here now of course there is a chip shortage, but that's not 2k's problem 2k problem is that they don't have any cross play at all if you already know that there's a chip shortage out there and a lot of people already aren't going to have playstation 5s but a couple people are going to be able to get um those new xboxes why don't we just have crossplay to make the player base a lot better and to actually bridge the gap between friends because i've heard many many sob stories about oh well i'm on last gen because the homies didn't get a PS5 and my PS5 literally just sitting collecting dust or I'm playing a last gen game on a newer console. Now, from where I stand, crossplay should have been in 2K. It should have been literally in any game that has multiplayer in the last three years. They should have done it within these last three years. If you haven't done it yet, I want to know what the big problem is. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Well, what about cross progression? That's number two on the list. 2K has to do a better job at giving players a chance to cross progress all across every console. So for instance, if you are on PlayStation 5, but you may be traveling over your homie crib for the weekend and your homie don't have a PlayStation 5 and you be damned if you leave your, um, I mean, bring your PlayStation 5 with you over to his crib and he got an Xbox, uh, whatever it's called. Why not play on his Xbox Log into your account and all of your VC, all of your bills from the cloud, all of your my team packs will already be there. Because funny thing is, if you are in the same family with 2K, that means if you have a PS4 and a PS5, all of your my team stuff is currently cross progressed. See, I don't know if you guys knew that, but they already have it set out where if you have the old Xbox and the new Xbox, all of your my team content is cross progressed. But see, they don't talk about my career, the biggest mode in 2K because it has several modes within it. They don't talk about that. They just say, oh, well, I mean, you're gonna have to make a new build or you're gonna have to do this or you're gonna have to do that. They don't have us pro cross progressing across every platform. If we have PS4 and we make a build, we should be able to go to that old Xbox and say, oh no, I'm, I'm running this journal Xbox today. I wanna see, I, I wanna feel how clunky it is. I wanna see if it's slower. I wanna see if it plays the same. They should have the ability to do that. Now, of course, cross play and cross progression. I'm sorry, PC, you're gonna have to see your way out of the conversation. You just can't play with us. Y'all got too much going on. Y'all got way too many mods happening. Y'all just can't play with us console players. I'm sorry. I know it hurts your feelings because there are a lot of people out there that love playing 2K on PC because why not? We spend thousands of dollars on our gaming PCs. We should be able to have fun on 2K instead of running into hackers and modders and all of that nonsense. But back to it. Cross progression, cross play. Those are your top two things that 2K should have on their list. Let's talk about the third. Backwards compatibility. Now, I know what y'all thinking. iPod, you just said all this nonsense about weeding it out and PS4 ain't never gonna be able to be on PS5 level. They ain't got the graphical array. They don't have the, the means to do so. They just, listen, there are a bunch of games out there in the last, I guess say 10, even 15 years that have been getting remastered. They have been putting on a backwards compatibility for a lot of these games and also why can't ps4 get what the city is getting in ps5 i just i really don't understand it there may have to be some underlying like dev thing that they have to tell me about but i feel like if there's backwards compatibility right and they just say okay we're gonna make one base game 
And of course, it's going to be downscaled on PS4. And on PS5, you'll get the best graphics, the best everything and all of that. Why not do that? Why not have PlayStation 5, the PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X, the Xbox One? Why not have all of those playing one game and then one person to just have better graphics than the other? Like, I'm going to be honest with you. The city, I'm okay with. You know what I mean? It's not like the like, oh my God, it's so crazy. It's it's not really it's not really like doing it for me like that. But just think about it like this. The old 2K, which is you know, current gen PS4, all of that, they don't have any affiliations at all. Yet they got mascots and from affiliation stuff and all that for rewards. I'm sorry. Sorry to happen to you. But why can't we have affiliation boats? Why couldn't we have a Beast of the East boat? uh south city or south side boat or whatever the case may be for viper like why couldn't every affiliation have its own boat like how when the old affiliation system was in the game we used to be able to go to the flyers court the rough riders court the the sunset ballers court like why can't we do that and just everybody plays one game and we just take that huge huge player base of all these 2k players and say hey guess what bloop 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 we're just gonna dump all of you guys into this one experience. And as the graphical arrays and technology and all of that, you know, supersedes PS4 and Xbox One, we're just gonna have to leave you in the past. You know what I mean? That could be maybe three years from now. You know what I mean? Why can't they just give everybody the same game and just backwards compatible everything and say, hey, you know what? You guys on PS5, You'll be able to play with them. You don't have to get a two different versions of a game and all of this nonsense. And one person sees this and one person sees that their experience is this and their and your experience is that no, let everybody share the same experience because you're coming out with essentially one basketball title, which is NBA 2K 23. So let everybody play the same NBA 2K 23. But uh, hey, you know what? I digress. You know what I mean? Because, hey, if I can't have my cross progression of my VC traveling from account to account to account, whether I'm logged on the Xbox or the PlayStation and stuff like that, I guess not. But let's talk about the first thing. Now, let's talk about the park for a moment. I know this is probably what a lot of people was waiting on, but let me get one thing straight. I am not a last gen player. I do not play on PS4. I will never touch that thing another day in my life. It sounds like an aircraft. It sounds like a 757. It sounds like a Boeing jet. I will never touch that console ever again. But I know what you all are thinking. Well, you know, you can just download NBA 2K22, the PS4 version on your PS5. No. Why have a PS5 and play a last gen game? It just it just never made sense for me. I'm not double grinding 2K and they know that I hit 40 on PS5 and they're going to make me try to grind 40 on PS4. Are you kidding me? That's what cross progression is. But you know what? I digress because I don't want to rant. Let's talk about the park for a moment. Now, the city is huge. We have a 1v1 um, old warehouse or market or whatever it's called. Uh, no, you know what? The old gym is 3v3 matchmaking. We have the 1v1 matchmaking. We have the Annie up. We have the event center. We have the rooftops. We have every affiliation park. We have the pro-am. We have the rec. We have all of the mobile garages. We have the Adidas court, Mountain Dew court. It's just so much to do in the city. Now, for last gen, I know y'all just run around on boats, play at the stage and stuff like that. That's great. But the city is huge. But one thing that is really, really lacking is the simple fact that we need to bring back 4v4 courts and even 5v5 courts. Now, let me tell you why. The event center, it was a great idea. It's a mobile hub for all of your events that you will throw in 2K. But I feel like they stepped away from a lot of events that they had at the old parks that had 5v5 and 4v4. So I believe that there should be at least two, two, uh, two 4v4 courts and one 5v5 court at any given time inside the city. And that's for every affiliation. And this is why. 
back in 2K16, 17 days, we had those courts where we could bring all those players in. And I believe if you do have those courts, you can bring in a bigger player base to some people actually watching games like they used to. Because nobody essentially is watching games anymore. Some people may find out that there's a YouTuber in their park or a rapper or an NBA player or a football player, and they may stay to try to drop them off real quick. But essentially... People don't want to wait for games like they used to. They don't want to wait for the array of like, oh my God, I'm about to play such and such. You know what I mean? The only time that truly happens is when a YouTuber decides I'm going to have a session where I'm going to invite my fan base to come and play me. But even then, if, those YouTubers do stream that they say that they're boosting when they're not. All they did was tell somebody, Hey, invite whomever you want to the park. You guys can pull up on us anytime and we have no problem getting these uh, tough games in. So, you know, that's, that's always something that a lot of people have trouble with because 2k they're riding a fine line with what's legal and illegal and what's boosting and stat padding and all of that. So it's a lot to deal with. But I feel like the park will only get better if you bring back all essential ways of how to ball. Because don't get me wrong, the old gym, the warehouse, the, those were fun and great and nice ideas. Those are amazing. But you can't make those the only way that somebody could actually play that game. Because remember, there's only two ways you can play 1v1. And that is inside the ante up and that is inside the uh, market. That's the only way to play 1v1. There are no 1v1 courts at the affiliations, which I believe they should be because some people want to test out their own skills instead of having to play 2v2 where one person is just doing everything and then the other person is sitting in the corner or setting screens. Same with 3v3 is one person sitting in the corner literally the entire game while two other people play 2v2. And that person in 2v2 is either setting screens or sitting in the opposite corner and one person is either run running, quick first step resetting. And you know what? We'll leave that for the next, <laughs> next one, okay? Let's talk about number five. <sighs> Wreck. Great old rec center. I have so many things to say about rec center, but there's only two things that 2K needs to do. Take out the AI bots, please. You need to make it where if people are going into matchmaking, you do this in every event center when there's a matchmaking, nobody gets a freaking bot. Take the bots out of the rotation. I don't care how long I got to sit in there. No more than five minutes inside the locker room waiting for teammates. Please give me players. Stop giving me bots. I'd rather play with four randoms than three randoms and a bot or two randoms and two bots. Please, for the love of me, 2K, take the AI bots out of the rotation for wreck you made it matchmaking for a reason you didn't say matchmaking plus bots you didn't do that so just make it matchmaking for all wait for teammates to come in make sure the builds is right stackable whatever i know that there's a lot of glitch builds out there and you guys don't know where to put them you, you're like hold on he's a shooting guard but he's six nine. Oh, we're not going to put him in that game we're going to put him in another game give people players secondly we need a revamp colors i'm talking court colors i'm talking arena graphics the aesthetic lighting please change the rec for nba 2k23 it is like watching paint dry while playing that move rec has looked the same for almost three years going we need something new whether you let us choose our colors at the locker room screen where there is a countdown timer. Maybe we have 30 seconds. Once the team is fully picked and everybody's picking everything, let us pick our colored jerseys. If we're away, cool. Give us blue and red or black and yellow or white and black or uh, yellow and green or, you know, just give us something different to look at when we play this game because it is driving us grinders crazy. And I know what y'all thinking. iPod ain't no grinder. I have hit 40 every season 
on NBA 2K22. So you can't take that away from me. I know that a lot of people's wish lists when they make them, they're people that really don't play the game that much. They just want to see a better product so they can actually come back. But I've been here. I've been here for years. So when it comes to us grinders, bro, and we're looking at Wreck and we're like, bro, we, we're literally losing our mind. We're getting tired after three to four games. That's why it looks exactly the same every single time we play it. Give us something different to look at, please. Number six on the list. I know this video is getting pretty long, right? Pro-Am, hi, how are you? I'm not sure if any Pro-Am player out there is gonna hate me for this, but why can't we make the Pro-Am the hardest difficulty there is on 2K? The craziest sliders, the, the, the hardest difficulty. Make Pro-Am players earn those wins. Now, I know a lot of people are thinking, yeah, but there's different timing in a Pro-Am. The, the timing in Pro-Am is different and, and stuff like that. I feel like Pro-Am, should be the upper echelon of the gamers that's in this 2K field. If people inside that Pro-Am arena trying to get wins, they playing the hardest, hard-nosed smack. Listen, all I can say is give the Pro-Am players the hardest difficulty, but also give them rewards for doing that. Now, this is what I mean. Pro-Am players can't use none of their rewards that they earn from the season. They can't wear mascots. They can't wear, you know, any, they can't do nothing in Pro-Am. Pro-Am is literally, you walk in, you're in your Pro-Am jersey immediately, and then you search for games. Give them something else to do in that arena. Make the arena like a walk around experience, and then maybe they can load onto the Pro-Am court to get some shots up before games. Give them something. They have been getting the worst rep for almost two, going on three years now. They've been getting the worst rep, and that's solely because 2K doesn't know if they're boosting or not. I understand, you know what I mean? I remember when you guys had 3v3 Pro-Am on the roof and people was boosting their life away. Hey, it happens. But you guys can't take away and strip them of everything because of something that you guys put in the game that essentially every team took advantage of. You put it in the game. So since you took that out, give them something more. Now I'm not saying make Pro-Am the best rep there is. So all we do is see people in Pro-Am getting their heads knocked off by all the real Pro-Am players that's trying to go to either the 2K League or they're playing in them Pro-Am tournaments in the 5v5 and 3v3 tournaments. That's not what I'm saying. But give them something, bro. But let's talk about that Lucky 7. Let's talk about player movement for a moment. Now, let me be very clear. I don't have too many problems with the player movement except on defense. I feel like, in all honesty, Offensive players have had the best movement for the last like five years. Defensive players always seem like they stuck in mud. They have badges working against them, which make them worse on defense. And as far as the player like clunkiness and stuff like that, the only time offensive players really get clunky is when they try to spam dribble combos together. That's really it. Other than that, they can run right and left. They can quick first step reset and get your defensive player jostled. So as far as player movement go, defense is the people who are really like hurting the most. So I feel like 2K really needs to take a real good look at defense this year and say, okay, how can we make their player movement better? Because obviously we have certain dribble sets that make an offensive player speed boost out of certain moves. So are there certain triggers and and combos of you know ways that people can shift and you know tether r2 and l2 and can lunge out of you know drop down defense into a sprint faster and things of that nature because guess what one thing i could tell you auto drop down defense stance has been a plague for NBA 2K for years now. If you ever notice and look at your player, automatically drop down in defense. They really rarely ever stand up straight. They rarely ever take off with any real, you know, explosion. It's just drop down defense, your hands out like this, and all you can do is just shade them left and right or let them run through you. Player movement has to be looked at this year. Just keeping it real. Let's talk about number eight. Let's talk about defense. So, I know that I talked about player movement and defense really, they're the ones that get hit the worst from it. But defense as a whole has been taking a backseat to 2K for 
four and a half years, and I'm going to tell you why. When NBA 2K comes out every year, Reddit, Twitter, Instagram, even YouTubers, they make videos about how their offensive players either can't hit shots, can't dribble, can't move, are too slow and too clunky, can't drive, can't dunk. It's just a whole bunch of, of I can't. While the defensive side of things are like, hey, it's pretty fun out here. I'm having, I'm having loads of fun. When NBA 2K22 dropped, everybody on defense was like, yo, besides the paint defense not being as crazy, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm able to block some shots. I'm able to get some lane steals. I'm able to get some pickpockets. You know what I mean? I'm able to actually play defense. I'm actually able to stay in front of my defender. Hold on. We got some new takeover perks. Oh, we have some new takeovers for defense. Oh, this is looking good. And then everybody complained. And guess what happened to defense? They took away pickpocket. 96 still for what? They took away interceptor auto steals. That was cool. But when you took out the auto steal, you actually made the game a little bit better. But a lot of people that usually normally get steals, the timing was now off. The timing isn't there anymore. If somebody presses square at a certain time, sometimes your player won't even react because there must have been something in that code of the auto steal that actually helped players with good timing get those steals. And I don't think they actually told us what it was, but they took it out anyway. Also, paint defense is non-existent. Paint mashing, where you at? Where are my paint mashers at? Hey, yo, if you paint mash, hey, type one in the chat, bro, because I'm going to know it's you. Listen, paint mashing is something serious. If a person is pump fakes a lot of times, they can either get a defender under the rim or behind them, and they get an easy lay almost every time. It's literally like an 88% chance that you'll make a shot paint mashing than it is drop stepping and going straight up or power backing down trying to get a standing dunk contact any of that paint defense is terrible what can we do to fix that what can we do to fix perimeter defense what can we do to fix paint defense i'll tell you what it is you have to fix player movement you have to fix the contest system that's at the perimeter that's at the mid-range and that's in the paint you have to fix the way who the guard actually works because sometimes who the guard pulls a player away now i i get it you guys have certain things inside the game like defensive assist and stuff like that where you can tone it down so that 2k can help your player and take your player for for a ride I understand that, but it's players like me out there that have to change that setting every time they log on to the game. And some people are running behind schedule already, getting in the park, getting in a wreck, getting in a pro-am, and forget to change those settings and be like, yo, why is my player playing like this? Oh, darn, my meter popped on. Oh, darn, I, my player movement. Oh, darn, my, my, my pass openness is messed up. That's because you guys didn't fix the system that is supposed to help the defense. Now, I feel like that's really about the only thing that I really have a problem with as far as the defense goes. But what I'll say is for the offensive side, please take the dunk meter out of the game for the defense to see. Please take the shot meter out of the game for the defense to see. I am totally fine with your teammates seeing your meters, but please stop giving defenders a tutorial on when to jump for a block. It is ruining the game simply because people that shouldn't know what's about to happen to them, that's about to get dunked on their head, they jump. That's why we don't see many contact animations anymore. That's why we don't see people getting destroyed like they used to in last year and the year before that game because there's a tutorial out for every defense around that says, hey, when you see that dunk meter, every person around him jump because when Intimidator kicks in, we're all safe. We're free. Nobody's going to get posterized. Now let's talk about number nine badges Woo! i could talk about this for hours boy 
Mismatch experts should not have been a badge that ever been made by 2K. How you gonna give smaller players an advantage shooting over bigger players? How is that 2K? Why is that 2K? I'll tell you why. 2K shines when they make the offense look amazing. But you know what hurts 2K more than letting the offense shine? It's shitting on the defense. NBA 2K11, for example, great game. You want to know why? We had freedom to do what we wanted to with our tendencies, our skill points, and our entire build as a whole. 2K has stepped away from that in recent years simply to give us templates on how to make a build. Let me tell you what's wrong with the game. Physicality, shit doesn't matter. I don't care how how fast your speed is, how your, how your stamina is, how high your vertical is. I want to know what your offensive and defensive awareness is like. I want to know what your layup tendency is like. I want to know what your dunk tendency is like. I want to know what your foul tendency or your draw foul tendencies are like. That's what I want to know about. If I have a slasher that gets contact dunks because he has a 92 dropping dunk and an 80 plus uh, vertical, I want to know what my draw foul tendency is. Do you know? I don't. And that's the problem. So when we talk about badges, we also have to talk about attributes. The biggest problem is if you look at the tiers that run down from 2K, you have finishing, you have shooting, you have playmaking and ball handling and defense and rebounding. I'm going to be completely honest with y'all. We should have seven different badge breakdowns. And I'm going to tell you what they should be. You should have finishing, which is literally everything at the rim. You should have shooting. Everything that has to do with your shooting close, shooting fades, shooting mid-range, shooting threes, shooting fade threes, shooting long range. That's great. Ball handling should be its own tier. Ball handling and playmaking should not be together. Playmaking. Playmaking should no longer be called playmaking. It should be called passing. It should be ball handling, then passing. Now, this is going to hurt y'all feelings. Rebounding by itself. Rebounding should be by itself. You want to know why it should be by itself? Because what if a 6'5 point guard doesn't really care about inside defense and they don't care about, you know, dealing with getting steals. Maybe they like blocks more. All right, let them do that in a different tier. But when it comes to this rebounding, maybe they want to have a good defensive rebounding because they want to be like Chris Paul. They want to be like Russell Westbrook. They want to be like James Harden. They want to be one of those, those scrappy players that can almost average 10 rebounds a game from long boards and having hustle and stuff like that. Rebounding should be its own tier. Six, perimeter defense, clamps, interceptor, hustler, freaking menace, like all like pick like all of those badges should deal with perimeter defense, paint defense. I'm gonna be honest with you, it shouldn't be called paint defense because anything at the perimeter is perimeter. But everything else should be inside because when we talk, when we think about the inside, when have you seen a big really do well as somebody at the mid range, but you see him do really, really well close. I'm talking about close shots, little small fades, little layups or jelly layups that try to come from, you know what I mean? A dotted line inside, of, like right near the restricted box. When have you ever seen any big really straight away from going after a block like that? So when we talk about defense, we shouldn't make it paint defense. We should make it inside the perimeter defense. So inside perimeter defense. So when we talk about blocking, we talk about defensive awareness. We talk about, let's say, the chase down artists, of course, and stuff like that. That should all be on the inside. But there should be badges within that tier that negate other badges. Like, for instance, 
if somebody had Hall of Fame mismatch, right? Which they were only given to like the smallest of the small builds, right? I'm talking five, six, five, seven, five, eight, five, nine, five, ten, maybe. Not, not too many five elevens and six foot players. But if you had Hall of Fame mismatch, why can't there be a build out there that has a badge? And I'm not gonna give 2K any names because I swear if I give them a name. And then they come out with that badge and they name it that. And everybody look at me like I probably knew the whole time. But why can't you guys make a badge to negate that? So what if their badge went to Hall of Fame, right? And you're like, man, I'm not, I'm not wasting, let's say, per inside perimeter defense. I'm sorry, perimeter defense on getting that badge up to Hall of Fame, but I might be able to get it to silver. Okay, cool. If your badge is on silver. It should knock down their badge from Hall of Fame to silver, right? That's how that's how I see things. I feel like every badge should have a counteractive badge that helps the defense look and play better instead of all of us just running around looking at people fade threes in our face and hit crabs in our face and <laughs> like bro. It's just so bad, man. So I feel like every badge should have a counteractive badge to it, as well as there should be seven tiers of badges. We need to stop putting things together because we don't know what we're signing up for. You know what I mean? That's why people make four to seven builds per year because they don't know what they signing up for. They just making builds out here. And they're like, dang, I didn't know this build was going to do this because I got that and this ain't work. And also, 2K, if you're looking for this game to be like an RPG type of game, I need you to break down everything. What a badge does, what boosts it gives you plus and minus. You know what I'm saying? Even when the badges negate each other and you need to tell us what badge it actually negates while we're choosing our build creation. Also, you need to show us a full list of all tendencies, all awareness, everything that you show us after we make it to the league and you and we see our team, uh, roster and we look at our plan we're like oh snap okay we got a we got a 93 and the average is maybe a, a 82 and then we see our attributes uh versus other players in the league and then our tendencies we need to see all of that at the creation we need to have full control of our players and our own destiny because guess what there will be people like me that come out and make build creation videos and other people might say, yo, you know what? That's a good build. But I want them to see that build and say, you know what? I got something better because I can make these tendencies a little bit different. And maybe I can make a better build, a better build set for that person's experience over mine. Because a lot of people love my versatile paint beast. But you know what they did? And I only did this because I wanted people to have a choice. I gave them the option to shoot threes. That's why I shoot middies with mine. Because, yeah, he's the midi Gorgon, but... I chose to shoot middies because I knew people were going to be in the comment section saying, oh, no, pa, you ain't you ain't you ain't really got one right here. I got this one. This one shoot threes. I did that on purpose. You feel me? I did that on purpose because I, I wanted to give people a better choice in bills that they made. That's why I said, hey, you, you create your bill how you want. This bill works better for me. I shoot middies. I don't want to sit in the corner. I want to be active. You know what I mean? Now. Last. But not least, rewards, 2K. I just want to say your season pass, battle pass, whatever you want to call it. You guys had a good first year. I know. Nope. I'm going to give you guys your flowers, man. For you guys to come out and make a bare bone season pass every single season to give out different rewards every season you guys did a pretty good job trying it out seeing how it works and i believe that this experience this data that you collected is a w because guess what you found out you found out that this community ain't taking y'all shit they don't play no games and they will riot so now you got to come in saying you know what how do we make it better first thing Take all of the dribbles, all of the animations, all of the shot dunk packages, layups, uh, and anything you can buy for your player. Take it out. If it has anything to do with our animations, stop 
putting that shit in different seasons. I should not have waited seven seasons to see the Curry slide. I shouldn't have. It's no reason I should have. This is something that you gave us every year at the beginning of the game. You did. You tried something to keep it fresh, and guess what you did? You your player base start going down. Y'all start realizing it. And then now all of a sudden you're giving us things at the end of the season because you want people to come back and play. Please don't do that again. All animations, give it to us at the beginning so we can buy it. Also, anything that we buy for one character, it should be able to go on the other character. Just how we buy our clothes and we win our rewards and they get to go to every player. If the player requirement is met, that player should have the dribble style. I should not have to spend 1750 VC, 2500 VC, 3750 VC on four different builds for one different move across the world with all my builds. I shouldn't have to do that. That's wrong. That is literally the definition of wrong because when we buy something with our VC, it should be given to us in a log. Hey, this person brought the Steph Curry step back. So any build that he, he creates, guess what? Give that man the Steph Curry step back, please, please. Now back to the reward side. I know that in the next few years, not if NBA 2K23 will have a paid season pass or battle pass, whatever you want to call it. I know it will. And I know why. Because guess what? A lot of people was talking about wanting throughout the entire season. They wanted VC. They were tired of the my team packs and we'll get to that shit. But they wanted VC because they felt like if they're grinding up to 40 and some of these items inside the stores that they're unlocking in different variations of them costs, they want VC along the way. Now, I know what you guys are going to say. Well, you have to pay for VC or you have to earn VC. Okay. If they have to earn VC, then they should have to pay for the battle pass. But if you do turn it in earning VC, it better be a hefty half the amount of VC given out to people every level, every season, because I feel like there has to be balance and there has to be enough VC given to a player throughout each season of a battle pass that they pay for to one rebuy the next battle pass and, or get one build up to 85 overall each season battle pass. If it's paid. Now, if you guys do not do that, if you decide we're not going to give anybody any VC, we're not going to do that. Take the my team rewards the hell out of the my, you know what? Almost cursed. <laughs> Please, with every bone in your body, take out my team rewards for my career players. We do not get on my career to earn items for my team at all and vice versa. Because I know the my team community, be they be going through it. But please don't let us earn that stuff. If anything, please give us a free item that we can buy at the store and have it in some type of log where let's say, for instance, at level 27, instead of a my team pack or whatever, you say, you can buy one item that costs 10,000 or 15,000 or 25,000 VC. What if you can create some type of log that says, okay, this person has this amount of store credit towards swags or towards, you know, the, the, the wheels or the Nike store or whatever the case may be. Why not give people store credit for items that they're going to be spending their money on because they're grinding this game for a reason. So these rewards have to mean something. Now, I'm not going to get into the rewards because, and, and when I mean rewards, I mean specific rewards like tigers, parrots, jetpacks, go-karts, things of that nature, simply because 2K, it's up to you guys to figure out what the community likes. Now, a person like me, I was really like excited when you guys brought, brought out the tiger. 
I was excited this season when you brought out the jetpack, but I made a jetpack video. I regret unlocking it because I can't do everything that I really want with it. And that's because I'm stuck in a pass. And I'm gonna be real with you. A lot of us players, we are stuck in a pass. And it's simply because we know how great you guys can make of a game. But we can't sit up here and stomach what you guys are doing with these rewards because at one point in time, you gave everyone an animated bundle Adidas suit or something like that with light up sneakers. That wasn't the move. The legend reward, the parrot, wasn't the move. Was not the move. But I understand. You guys want to have rewards that keep people playing and stuff like that. And you guys did that. Level 39, you get plus one badge point every single season. I probably will be one of the, the, I guess, I guess you can call us like the many few that get a badge point for every season. But where's our Gatorade for all our builds? Where's skill boost for all our builds? We hit legend and stuff like that. We we got none of that. We got XP tokens that were then taken from us because XP token exploit was out in the world and you guys didn't know how to handle it. So you just rip XP tokens from everybody as soon as the new season starts. I don't want to do workouts for every single one of my builds. I have five builds. I don't want to do Gatorade workouts for all of them. You should have given us a reward in 2K22 where you gave Gatorade to all builds. You have, should have given skill boost to every legend that made it the legend. Whether you say, hey, legends, you make it let the legend in season six, season five, or even season four like you did. Everybody build should have had skill boost. You know what I mean? You guys are making us earn these badge points. We could have earned that too. You know what I mean? You guys could have did a lot with these rewards. And I know that you guys can do a lot with these rewards because I know next year it'll probably be something better and something different. I understand it was bare bones, but you got a lot to work on a lot. And if anybody in the chat has anything they would like to say, now is the time because we know that NBA 2K23 is coming and we know that it's still going to be a yearly game because 2K has not given us any indication that they will look at their platform and their game and say, we should work on this game for the next three to four years and make it the best game out because I made a video about NBA 2K21 and what they should do in the next four years and everything like that, especially when next gen was coming out and they dropped the ball. 2K22 came out. They dropped the ball again. We are now looking at a brand new game about to come out for NBA 2K23. Everybody's going to have to start over on all their builds, right? You're going to have to buy a whole new game. Right, you're gonna have to buy a brand new VC, right? Because guess what? Your VC ain't carrying over, right? So, 2K, before I go, please, if if you can make your game a three to four year game where you only focus on that game, the mechanics, the engine, all of that, instead of having to work on a brand new game, you can call it NBA 2K. You can call it season 2022 to 2023, then 2023 to 2024, then 2024 to 2025. And it could just be called NBA 2K. I know that y'all want to keep the name going 2K23, 2K24, 2K25, 2K26. I know, I know you do, but it's hindering the development process because I know y'all devs can do such a bang up job if you only had one thing to focus on. And with that being said, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you didn't like the video, please like the video. I'm going to see y'all next time.